Can you beat Fire Emblem Engage without taking damage? No. You can't beat Sombron in the prologue, but the prologue isn't canon. So what if we try this starting at chapter one? Could we beat the game? Let's find out. The rules for this are if any blue unit or any unit that can be recruited on that chapter takes damage, that will count as a game over condition. And I will be forced to rewind with the time crystal. And in the first few chapters where I don't have the crystal, I will have to reload my save. I will also not be using the arena as I would technically be damaging my own units. There will be no additional restrictions for this run, so all DLC is allowed. Additionally, I will be trying to beat every map in the game to test the possibilities for this run. A noteworthy thing is sometimes my units won't be at full HP, because if they gain HP on a level up, it will not increase their current HP. Alright, be sure to like and subscribe, and let's begin! On Chapter 1, I place Alir in a thicket, and then thanks to Alir's personal skill, Vanda takes no damage from the Corrupted. On enemy phase, Alir now dodges an attack and finishes off the Corrupted with a counter-attack. I now continue to weaken with Vanda and finish off the Corrupted with Alir. Eventually, we gain Mask Ring, and Mask Rapier makes this chapter much easier, as it has a 20 avoid bonus, and it results in the Corrupted having extremely underwhelming hit rates. Additionally, with Marth, Alir is able to one round the Corrupted, and with a few lucky misses, I'm able to clear out the remaining enemies, and I beat the map without taking damage. On Chapter 2, I can't do the intended move of attacking the Axe Fighter, or the Arch will damage me. So I place Alir in this thicket, and I pray for a miss. Unfortunately, she gets hit, so I now reset. Fortunately, on my next try, I get a lucky dodge. I now use Vanda and Clan to take out an Archer, and then I use Lodestar Rush to finish off the Axe Fighter. Now Lumera moves in, and I stack up as much Avoid as I can, and I fight her on enemy phase. I avoid her attack and deal a significant chunk of her HP on a counterattack. I now weaken her with Clan, and I finish her off with Alir. On the second part of the map, I move to finish off the Axe Fighter. Now a few enemies move in, so I have to engage. Use Lodestar Rush to finish off the Lance Fighter. I then use Vanda and Clan to take out the Archer. I now bait out Lumera, and I have to rely on a Lucky Dodge to do so. Unfortunately, due to the fact that I used Lodestar Rush early, I can't reliably take out Lumera without taking damage. Fortunately, Giga Chad Vanda lands a 3% crit, and he saves me a reset. To begin Chapter 3, I used Lodestar Rush on the Sword Fighter to kill him. My other units now hide from the other enemies. On the next enemy phase, I must avoid this Sword Fighter's attack, or I will have to reset. This was quite frustrating, as every time I had to play this map, I had to reset like 5 times. I now steadily use Breaks to take out the first wave of enemies without taking damage, but the next wave of foes wouldn't be so easy. There was just so many of them, and most of them had overlapping range, and I unfortunately ended up taking damage. I now reset for literally an hour, and eventually I find a strategy that works. You see these flyers? In my hour of resets, I found that they can sometimes move along the outside of this wall, and with my units in this position, they would always do this. I had to do this so I could fight just the sword fighter, and then I had to dodge this attack and ideally crit, as it would save me risking two additional chances to get hit from the sword fighter and archer. On the next turn, I finish off the two flyers with Valir and the other with Etier. I now dodge this archer. With that complete, I just attack the boss with Plan and Boucheron to get the kill. Then Alfred and Etier take out this sword fighter, and I finish off the final enemy with Valir to beat the map without taking damage. Fortunately for Chapter 4, we gain the help of the hero's bonus items. And we also gained the very useful Sigurd Ring. This map was the one that I was the most scared of going into this run, as Louis and Chloe are quite far away from my other units, and a large amount of units move towards them quickly. To help them out, I collect the Javelin in the village with Alir, and I trade it over to Saline and use Warp Ragnarok to move her in. The damage she deals is vital, as the Fire Mage could attack Chloe and Louis on turn 1, so I had to take them out quickly. My units at the bottom of the map now move right to clear out the area to allow my upper units to retreat. Louis and Saline now take out the Surge Mage, and on the following enemy phase, I have to dodge two attacks, one from an archer and one from a sword flyer. They both hit, but fortunately for this map we gain access to the time crystal, so I can rewind to save some time over resets. The problem with this is I have no easy combats to engage in, so I couldn't really rig the RNG. This unfortunately resulted in me resetting a few times, but eventually Sailing gets lucky and avoids the two attacks coming her way. On the following turn, my lower units take out the Lance Fighters, and my upper units take out the Cavalier and Flyer. After another safe enemy phase, my lower units cleanly finish off the enemies in their range, and my units at the center of the map take out an Armonite, and they also weaken the Barbarian. Fortunately, the Barbarian's AI will never let him attack as long as he has a clear path towards the village. I now finish off the Barbarian at 2 range, and on the next turn I run away from the Armor Knights. 
because I can't take them both out in one turn. Unfortunately, I can't easily run away thanks to the thicket, so I have to risk getting hit on enemy phase. I luckily dodge this attack, and then I swiftly run away. In my current position, I can quite easily safely engage the remaining enemies, but I have to be careful with the boss, because of his high durability and ability to counterattack at range with a javelin. Fortunately, he was quite easy to beat, I just used Warp Ragnarok to prevent a counterattack, and then I finish with Plan. On Chapter 5, I have to remove Celica from Saline, because if she reaches Bond level 3, she will gain resonance, and for this run I would be unable to use her because of the skill's self damage. I begin the map by taking out two enemies in my range, and then I have a safe enemy phase thanks to Louis. On the subsequent turn, I send Louis to damage one of the sword fighters, and on the turn after that, I use Override to weaken two additional sword fighters, allowing for me to easily deal with them. With the initial pressure lifted, I can now easily take out another group of enemies. Suddenly, the enemies near the choke point begin to move. I manage to safely deal with them, but they stall me long enough that the thief escapes. I now refill my emblem gauges on a few of my units, and I break the door. Louis now engages with Sigurd, and he moves all the way forward forward to the Thunder Mage and kills him. On the next turn, a few of my units take on the approaching enemies and Louis takes out a Cavalier. The remaining approaching enemies are quite simple to deal with and I now reach the boss. I can't quite take the boss, so I have to retreat and I wait for an opportunity to strike. I now get the opportunity and I blast him with all of my engage attacks and I finish him off with Chloe to end the map. On Chapter 6, I unequip the Marfring from Alir as I will need all the firepower I can attain if I want to take out the boss. I begin the map by using Alir and Yunaka to take out the fighter with the Makaya Ring. My lower units take out the Longbow Archer for safety, and then I one-shot a sword fighter with Lui. On the next turn, I retreat into the thickets at the top of the map with Alir and Yunaka. On the lower part of the map, I take out the Thunder Mage that would be quite scary if left alive, and the Archer and Axe Fighter were easy to finish off. With these enemies dealt with, I can now push up towards the center of the map, but I have to be careful because this is a Fog of War map, and any of my units could take damage if they're not careful. But another problem I face is I have to be proactive, and push up or I'll be over run by the large amount of enemies that rush you. Yunaka and Alir don't really face any problems and the upper enemies are quite trivial to deal with. The lower units continue to push and I need to do this to regain my Marth engage so I can cleanly deal with the boss that I uncover. I lure them out into an open area and then I obliterate him with a combination of engage attacks. I get the kill with Saline to end the map. With chapter 6 complete we unlock the DLC so I pick up the house leader's bracelet and the axe and lance from the well. Since I couldn't think of a way to engage Hortensia in chapter 7 without warp I decide to do the Tiki Paralogue. This map is quite hard to do without a second archer to take on the dragons, so I forged up a worm slayer to allow a leer to one-shot them. To begin the map, I retreat a little, and on the following turn, I collapse onto the enemies in my range. I steadily progress towards the first Phantom Wyvern, and because of their high attack range, I have to use Warp Ragnarok and a Sigurd Engage to safely deal with them. I now bait out the mage with Dimitri's Shield Gambit, and on the next turn, I take them out, and I also take out a Wyvern with Fallen Star. On the following turn, I use another Fallen Star to both take out a Wyvern, and to safely bait out the upper Wyvern. I decide to stay where the reinforcements spawn, and I kill them as they appear. With Etienne and Alir, I one-shot the Wyverns, and the other units that spawn were quite easy easy to deal with. The hardest wave for this challenge was the thief wave, but with an override they were quite easy to deal with. I also face a slight issue when the upper right enemies begin to move, so I head towards them and I finish them off swiftly. Then I regain my position of spawn camping the reinforcements. After finishing off the reinforcements, I begin to move up and clear out the enemies in the top right of the map. With that done, I open the door on the west. The Wyvern and the Cavs were easy to deal with, and now I begin the Rewarp Duplication Glitch. To perform this glitch, you need a character that is about to level up, you need to unequip their weapons, and you need to use a range to move Rewarp to the top of their inventory. Now you use Rewarp, and then you rewind with a Time Crystal. This glitch replaces a unit's last equipped weapon with Rewarp. For this run, this glitch gives me flexible use of Makaya and Rewarp to make quite a few maps much easier. I now open the right door, and I use Fallen Star and Etia to finish off the Wyvern who comes out. I now place Louis to block the choke point, and the Cavaliers in front of him deal zero damage to him. This allows me to safely chip down Tiki with a Longbow. With this strategy, I easily defeat Tiki and beat the map. I now decide to do the Sauron Parallel. I begin the map by rushing to the right with Louis, and I also abuse this Ammonite's Great Axe to kill him without taking damage. Next, I move next to Saline with Alir, and I use Rewarp to safely move towards the right side. My abundance of units allows me to easily clean out this area of any dangers. On the subsequent turn, I face a slight problem with the Sword Flyers, as they're out of range of my non-fire units, and one of them has an Armor Slayer, so they can actually damage Louis. To combat them, I use another Rewarp to reposition Vander, then I dispatch off one of them with Fallen Star. This makes him effectively invincible, so on the next enemy phase, the flyers ignore him. I now kill the flyer, and then I move towards the center of the map. Overall, a big problem I had with this map is the magma crater tiles, as they had a huge impact on most of my unit's movement, as they made moving up fast quite hard. Anyway, I now push into the center of the map, and I prepare to bait out Sorin, who is quite annoying thanks to Bolting's insane range. To safely bait him out, I use Fallen Star for safety, but I also need to set up for an impactful rewarp, so I also put Chlorian range. 
Walk straight leaves, she dodges the bolting. On the flowing turn, I use warp to move a Lyran range of a rewarp with Saline. This perfectly allows me to move right next to Sauron. I take out his first HP bar with a crit from Chloe, then I use low style rush to finish off his final HP bar to end the map. On the Veronica power log, I forget to record the first few turns, but with the power of the time crystal, you can see roughly what happened on each turn. The most noteworthy thing I did is I had to rewarp to the center of the map as I can't fight all the enemies at once. Anyway, this allows me to block the choke point with Louie, and the rest of my squad heads towards the top right. I manage to safely reach the top right, and then I use rewarp to move a few of my units in range to attack Veronica. I take out her first HP bar with Lodestar Rush. Her next HP bar was taken down with a combination of a Houses Unite and Etier with a Steel Bow. I now decide to do the Camilla power log. To begin the map, I use a signed decoy to move in, and I manage to safely reach an area where I can set up for a rewarp play. I now use rewarp, and then I dance with Veronica to rewarp again. This allows me to reach the boss quickly. I use Chloe to weaken her first HP bar, and I finish it off with Etier. And I use Fallen Soul with Vanda, he lands a crit, and finishes off Camilla. With a few power logs to complete, I decide I should easily be able to progress the main story, so I begin Chapter 7. Since I've done a lot of the DLC, my units are quite overleveled for this map, and progressing is quite easy. I mainly just rely on my archers to shoot down the flyers, and Louis to safely engage the large group of enemies. I don't really have any problems. I just mostly rely on Louis to lead the charge, and I eventually reach the point where I must engage the boss. Because of Hortensia's engage attack, all for one, I can't exactly bait her out, or she will damage me with either Noble Rapier's effective damage, or the chain attack true damage, so I have to rewarp to move towards her. I then use Dark Inferno, Blowway, and Citrine to take out her first HP bar, then Alir ends the map with a Lodestar Rush. Now I do the Chrom Parallel. For this map, I forge a Silver Great Axe to get some additional value out of Dark Inferno from Camilla. To begin the map, I split up some units, and I send Chloe to the left, as she takes zero damage from the Cavaliers, and I also send Louis to the right, as he takes little to no damage from the Axe Fighters. On the next turn, the Flyer Reinforcements show up, and my units on the right struggle to deal with them, so I just take out a few of them, and then I use Rewarp to move them to a safe area. Fortunately, my units on the left are able to handle the reinforcements just fine, and I finish off the Flyers on the right side, and use Louis to handle the upper Flyers, while on the left, I bait out the Archers. They move towards me, so I take them out, and fortunately, I stay safe thanks to the terrain. With that done, the rest of the map was quite easy. I effortlessly split up the Armor Knights to take them down, and my units to the right have an equally painless time. I now weaken the crystals and prepare for a big reroll play to attack Chrom and Robin. With Sigurd's engage attack, I send Louis to chip down Robin, and then I use Cataclysm to finish him off, while simultaneously chipping down Chrom's first HP bar. Next, I send in Lapis to weaken him further with the third Book of Worlds, Death. This allows Chloe to move in and attack him without risking a counterattack. I then devastate his second HP bar with a Dark Inferno. This allows for any attack to end the map, and I choose to use Mercurius for the extra EXP. On the Hector Power Log, I yet again forget to record the first few turns. Fortunately, this map is quite easy, so it doesn't really matter. The only problem I face is the vents that can poison Louis, making him take damage from every attack that would hit him. To remedy this, I use antitoxins, and I am easily able to push out of the starting area. I try to move up and set up for an easy rewarp to kill the boss, but Hector is just far more durable than I expect, and I just decide to take on the reinforcements and bait out a few enemies near Hector with bolting. The reinforcements were trivial to deal with, but I have to employ the use of a big override to handle the units coming from the left. With that done, I just move Louis in range of an archer near Hector, and it causes him to move. Again, I can't quite deal with him, so I run all the way towards the top right of the map while gradually thinning the numbers of the units around Hector. This has the fortunate side effect of causing Hector to accumulate three stacks of poison, significantly boosting my damage. I deal huge damage with Saline, and then I take out a HP bar with Lapis. After that, I attack again with Citrine for some chip, and I end the map with a Lodestar Rush. On Chapter 8, I set up for a rewarp play on Turn 2. I then use rewarp and attack Ivy with Cataclysm. I then finish off her HP bar with Chloe, and then I use Dark Inferno to pick up the secret book on the mage. I then finish the map with a Lodestar Rush. Just before I attempt Chapter 9, I reset for an Ulrin Bond Ring. Chapter 9 features a slight problem of Jade needing to avoid damage, so to do this, I rewarp up to her, and I take up the knights surrounding her. On enemy phase, a few enemies surround me, so I employ the use of Dark Inferno to take out multiple units in one turn. On the following turn, I manage to take down both Zelkov and Kagetsu to prevent the reinforcements from spawning. Next, I take out the Armor Knights on the lower part of the map, and after that, I use Bolting to bait out Ivy. I now wait for her to approach, and when she's in range, I blast her with powerful attacks. Just before defeating her, I pick up the Spirit Dust, and then I end her with a Dark Inferno. I now decide to do the Anna Parallel. Because I vastly outscaled this map, I don't really have any problems. I just rush down towards Anna, and I don't open the chest, and I easily defeat the boss. The next power log was equally simple. I just used Rewalk to take out any threatening enemies, and then the rest of the map was a joke. 
Now the only map left to take on was chapter 10. I begin the map by placing Yunaka into a pillar. Her impressive avoid made sure that she would not be hit. And on the other side of the map, Louis and his impressive defense bait out the enemies to the right. On the next turn, I use Cataclysm, Dark Inferno, and Houses Unite to clear out all enemies around Rosada. My units on the other side of the map retreat a little, and on the next turn, they begin to unleash a powerful offense. And with some engage attacks, I easily clear out the enemies. I now begin to engage Hortensia. To do this, I position my units to take out the enemies around Hortensia, and begin my assault by attacking the Arbor Knight with Saline. Citrine combined with Veronica does the same thing to the other Armor Knight. I now use a longbow to shoot down a flyer. Chloe and Vanden now take out a flyer. Finally, I send in Louis to kill the archer, and he Canter the way to safety. I now easily overpower Hortensia, and I break the door to fight Moria. He's pretty easy. I kill him and some sword fighters with Cataclysm. Hyacinth's Astro Storm was quite scary, so I have to use a Sign Decoy to force him to attack Louis. Now Hyacinth moves in my range and I attack with Diamond to sail for some chain attacks. With a Crit Raging Storm, I manage to take out his first HP bar, and I'll use a Silver Blade to deal heavy damage to Hyacinth, and I get some free XP with my Wiki units and finish him off with Louis. We now move on to Chapter 11. This map features one minor problem of enemies with the Celica rank. It allows them to have an extremely far movement range. In addition to this, they have the Resonance skill, which will force them to deal true damage, meaning my units will take damage regardless of how high their res is. To beat them, I wait a turn and get into position, and then I use Camilla's excellent movement boost to snipe them with Dark Inferno. I now use a sign decoy to protect Diamond as he gets frozen from the disruption with Makaya. I now rush him with Vanda to trigger Ivy, Kagetsu, and Zelkov to appear, in addition to us regaining the valuable Time Crystal to help with safety. Unfortunately, this also spawns in the Hounds, and Zephyr and Marnie have quite high movement, so I now have to rush towards the bottom of the map quickly. To do this, I use enemy phase counterattacks that are somewhat safe when I use Lucina's Bonded Shield. When I descend up on the bottom of the map, I have some problems because of the abundance of enemies that are around that area. I decide to use Astrosorm to bait out some of them, allowing for me to thin their numbers while simultaneously advancing. I now get a fortunate activation of Bonded Shield, and I survive the enemy phase. On this turn, I take out the enemies blocking my escape, and I escape with Valir to escape the map. On chapter 12, I use Louis with Raging Storm to move up quickly and my other units take out the enemies in their range. On the following turn, I continue my advance, and I manage to take down the Wolf Knight. Unfortunately, Louis can't move up as the Warrior can damage him, so I have to wait a turn. I then move in with a Dark Inferno and dispatch of the Warrior with Louis. Now some reinforcements show up, but they aren't too hard to handle. Shortly after, more reinforcements show up. The Flyers with Great Lances are easy to beat without taking damage, but the Wolf Knights are a little harder. I wait for them to reach the lower part of the map, and I take out the Mage with Louis. Next up, last one of the Wolf Knights with Thunder, and I finish them off with a Leer. To beat the second Wolf Knight, I hit them with a Dark Inferno, and I finish with Pandrea. I now begin Chapter 13. This is a Fog of War map, which is quite annoying for this run. I begin the map by taking out the enemies between Elias group and Tamara's group. I now head south, and I uncover a sniper that is easy to take out, but I also use a sign decoy to bait out the Longbow Archer, hidden in the fog. I try to kill him, but I don't really have a safe way to fight him, so the best I can do is a little chip with a javelin. I now use a torch on Chloe, and push into the center of the map. This uncovers the barbarian going for the village, so I use Raging Storm to send in Louis, to land the houses unite to safely take him out. With that done, Sorin's assigned decoy and Louis's massive defense helps me push towards the boss. However, I have a problem. At the back of my army, a large amount of flies push me, so I take out as many as I can, and I use a sign decoy and Louis to distract the remaining survivors. After taking them out, the bosses start to move, so I lure them into this open area. I now attack with Zelkov to uncover the two hidden enemies in the fog. I follow up with an attack from Meren, and I finish off their first HP bar with Panet. I now unleash a powerful Cataclysm to weaken both bosses and to kill the mage. Alir now finishes off the boss with a Tomahawk. The Brapex box was much easier to deal with since they can't counterattack at 2 range, and I finish them off with a crit from Louis. Chapter 14 is a pretty simple map. I split my units up and then I kill the thieves. On the right side of the map, I rely on Louis to help push up. As for my units on the left, they get into some trouble, and they have to retreat counterclockwise. My units on the right now clear away towards the chests. I now abuse Louis's high defense to push towards the left, and I annihilate the units I have baited out on the next player phase. Reinforcements now show up, but they are no match for Louis. I now abuse Astrosorm's high range to bait out the hounds individually, making them much easier to deal with. The first I fight is Marnie. I decimate her first HP bar with Ivy, and then her next HP bar was taken down with Saline and Pandrea. I now fight Zephyr. First I weaken her with Cataclysm, and then I defeat her first HP bar with Kagetsu. Her second HP bar was simple to beat with Ivy. Ovia was another simple boss, and I defeat him with my mages. I now try to fight Hortensia, but she decides to not move, so I have to wait out until she runs out of uses of Fracture. But because of Luin's true damage, Damage. I can't fight her on enemy phase, so I retreat until I have an opportunity to strike. I attack with Zelkov to weaken her, and I finish her first HP bar with Saline. I weaken the second HP bar with Volkris, and I dispatch with the HP bar with Kagetsu. I now accidentally kill Hortensia with Veronica's Book of Worlds, because this is my first time using her, and I didn't know the damage could actually kill. Alright, Chapter 15. This one starts with a slight problem. You see Cedar, he's under attack, 
and he will take damage if we don't save him. In order to save him, I use Bile of Stance to send in Ivy and Panet, who each are able to take out one Corrupted. I now use Cataclysm to restrict the movement of this Corrupted with Anima Focus, and on the subsequent turn, I finish off the initial Corrupted, and then I recruit Cedar. Because I can't safely bait out the next group of enemies, I use Bolting to trigger them to move. I now retreat to this open area, and I easily handle the group of enemies without issue. The next room was slightly annoying, as I had to end turn with a unit that could take both magical damage and physical damage. My best choice was Kagetsu, who I significantly buffed his res with a Pure Water and Geospear. This allowed him to take no damage from the mage, but I still had to dodge the Axe Fighter. I now quite easily push towards the next room, where I use Camilla's Water Dragon Vein to clear out the Miasma. I now bait out the Mediocre Flame Lance user, and on the following turn, I decimate the enemies with a powerful Cataclysm. In the final room, I bait out my foes with Louis, who is fortunate enough to land a crit to take one of the enemies out. I then weaken a few enemies with Cataclysm, and I move in. I restrict the snipers with Corrin's Engage skill, and I abuse the boss's low hit to easily defeat him. Now all that was left for me to do was to escape the map. On chapter 16, I take out the worm with Rosado and Saline, while a few of my units handle the thieves. I now carefully move towards the center of the map by using a flame dragon vein to restrict my enemies. On enemy phase, I use bonded shield to safely bait out a paladin and I kill him with a critical retaliation. I now easily crush the upper enemies, but I have to position carefully to not be in range of the elf under mage knights. My units continue to move up, but I get punished when reinforcements from behind show up, and my units in the lower part of the map are unable to take out the great knight and I unfortunately take damage. I now try a different approach, and I end up using ivy to clear out a lance fighter. This helps out just enough, and I manage to safely handle the lower units. Unfortunately, this comes at a cost of my upper units, who have to retreat down while using the Flame Dragon Vein as cover. Now my units get in a tricky situation, with powerful units on all sides. To survive, I use the Flame Dragon Vein to slow the upper enemies, and I just barely have enough firepower to take out the enemies on the left. With a signed decoy, Louis handles the Great Knight on enemy phase, and I accidentally risk Sea Dog getting hit. Fortunately, he gets a lucky dodge to avoid damage. Now the map's pretty much done, I easily take out the reinforcements, I decimate the worm, and then I make my way towards the bosses. I bait out Marnie with bolting, and then I take down her first HP bar with Ivy. I now use Bolting again, and on enemy phase, I finish off her final HP bar. To beat Malvia, I weaken with Pentreo, then I finish his first HP bar with Ivy. With a Dark Inferno, a single swing from Kagetsu's hand axe was more than enough to end the map. On chapter 17, I manage to take out the four enemies in front of me. Then Gris moves in, and I find him extremely frustrating to deal with. With Dark Corp, he effectively had a massive movement range, and none of my units without a dance could reach him without being in range to take damage. Additionally, if I was in range to attack him, he had some backup behind him, so I try to run away and use Hector's res boost to bait him out. But thanks to Resonance's true damage, he still dealt damage. Luckily, I managed to think of a plan. By sending in Panette to use Dark Inferno, I could stay out of range of the Halberdiers while lowering his HP to 1 to deactivate Resonance, allowing for me to bait him out safely with Chloe. Fortunately, with him out of the way, the other enemies coming towards me were trivial to deal with, so I begin to engage Marnie's group. I initiate this with the Flame Dragon Vein, and I continue to abuse its movement restriction as I decide to fight Movia first. I defeat the Cavs around him with Louis and a signed decoy. Next, I use Giga Eleven Sword and Panette to take out a HP bar. Then I attack with Houses Unite and Kagetsu to finish him off. And I'll steadily thin the numbers around Marnie, and with my magic users, she's easy to finish off. With those bosses down, I use Bolting to safely bait out the rest of the map. I now retreat to the bottom right, and I try to safely bait out Zephyr. But I miscalculate, and I almost take damage. Ivy now attacks with Thunder for Chip, and with a Giga Eleven Sword, I end her first HP bar. Then I just use a Houses Unite and Chloe to finish off the second. The other two bosses weren't going to be that easy, so I had to re position slightly and thin the numbers on the enemies around them. I eventually get a chance to unleash a huge Dark Inferno to deal massive damage to both Vale and Hyson. I now safely take out Vale with Louis, and with some Raging Storms, Houses Unites, and just plain old attacking, Louis smashes his way through Hyacinth to end another chapter. On chapter 18, I move Louis in range of the Wyverns, and I use a signed decoy to kill them on enemy phase with a Worm Slayer. Now a few enemies move towards my position, so I have to take them out. I use the Flame Dragon Vein to restrict the movement of enemies coming to the right, and then I use Fracture to break the Sniper to allow Ivy to safely kill him. Then I dance Ivy and proceed to stack up Speed Taker. On the left side, I rely on Bonded Shield to stay safe for the next enemy phase. On the next turn, I use the Sigurd Engage to send in Hortensia to recruit Linden. Then I kill some foes with Ivy to stack up Speed Taker. I then use Dark Inferno to collect the Speed Wing, and then I dance Ivy and attack the boss. She just barely is able to take out one HP bar. On enemy phase, the boss moves first, but she has terrible hit rates and she dodges. Ivy now proceeds to kill her, ending the map. On chapter 19, I block this choke point with Louie, who literally takes zero damage from all enemies. 
so I quite easily beat most of the enemies from farm EXP. The only troublesome enemy other than the bosses is this worm, who I beat with Fracture and a few attacks from Ivy. When Movia begins to move, I bait him out with Pandreo and assign Decoy, and I pelt him from the safety of free range. This ultimately results in him dying, and I'll slowly kill every non-money enemy, and I slow chip her down with my mages. Because of three stacks of poison, this was quite easy, and I end the map with an attack from Meren. Chapter 20. For this map, I send Panette with Sigurd to crit Chris. This causes him to move towards the top of the map, but Kagetsu was already there. To defeat him, I must one-shot him as he has unholy stunts, and he will damage me if I fail to one-shot him. This means I have to rely on the time crystal until I get lucky enough that I crit him twice, then I end the map. With that chapter done, I decide this would be a great time to do every single paralogue I have access to, so I begin Makaya's paralogue. This map is very easy. I just use Astro Storm to bait out Makaya, then I take advantage of her awful physical durability to tear through her HP bars. Her final HP bar was a little harder to deal with, but with two attacks from Saline, Gigetsu can easily finish her off. On Ike's Paralogue, I handle the lower units with Louie, the eastern enemies with a Flame Dragon Vein, and I manage to take out the Armored Knights with Ivy. Ike moves towards me due to me attacking him with Astro Storm. I now bait him out with Ivy, and because of his predictable AI, he equips a hammer, allowing for me to take down a HP bar on enemy phase. With an attack, a dance, and another attack, I defeat Ike for an easy win. On Byleth's Paralogue, avoiding damage is extremely easy, as the enemies literally don't attack you. I steadily progress up the map, and I easily clear out the passive enemies. To beat the Worms, I use Houses Unite to beat one, and I use the combination of Bolting and a Worm Slayer to beat the other. I now entrap one of the mini-bosses near Byleth, and my magic users make quick work of them. I now try to use Rewarp to kill Byleth quickly, but this just fails, so I have to rewind. With some patience, Byleth moves in my range, and I take out three of his HP bars with Ivy. I then observe his Ruin with a crit from Bluey. On Corrin's Paralogue, I re up over to Corrin. I now use a large amount of dances to finish all of her HP bars with Ivy to end an easy map. On Erica's Paralogue, I use two re to transport a squad down the map. Next, I use Louis to open a way towards Erica, and then I find out he has underwhelming hit rates against her. So I have to abuse the Time Crystal to land a few key attacks on Erica. I take out her first HP bar with a crit, a second with an atrocity, a third with a Houses Unite, and her final one with another atrocity. I significantly outscaled the Lucina Paralogue, so it should not be a surprise that I use re to easily beat her in one turn. I yet again significantly outscaled the Lin Paralogue, and yet again, I re in. Louis now plays a weird version of Smash or Pass, where he smashes Lin, and then ends the map with a Houses Unite. On the Sigurd Paralogue, I slowly move up and deal with the initial enemies, so I can get in position to make an effective re play. I then push through this mage with Kagetsu, and haha, <laughs> I turn Sigurd to Ash with some attacks with Ivy, to end the map. On the Leaf Paralogue, I go collect the Speedwing, and then I warp over to Leaf, and I kill him in one turn. On Roy's Paralogue, I use a Sign decoy on Louie to proactively push towards the right. This goes well, and I easily reach the right side of the map. I now set up for a good rewarp and warp down. Thanks to Divine Pulse, I land a lucky entrap to move Roy in my range. I weaken him with Ivy, but his holdout makes it hard to finish his first HP bar. With a Byleth Dance, I use Hortensia to finish off his first HP bar. I then use Veronica's weapon that I can't pronounce to drop Roy's HP to 1. Then I finish him off with Pandrea. With another attack from Ivy, I end the map with Panette. On Celica's Paralogue, I set up for a rewarp play and move directly towards her. I weaken her with Dark Inferno and then I take out her first HP bar with Louie. Louie attacks again with Houses Unite into an atrocity to end the map. On Chapter 21, we finally return to the main story, but we use the strategies we've learned from the power logs to rewalk towards Vale. I take out her first HP bar with Houses Unite, then her next HP bars were easy with a few swings of a Brave Lance. On Chapter 22, I quickly push down and take out the Warriors. My army now moves towards the rings, while Louie stalls the enemies coming to the left. Now I move a leer in range of the first set of rings, because I know this triggers the griffins to move, I try to use a sign decoy to weaken them on a counter attack. Unfortunately the griffins move in a weird order, preventing Ivy from attacking. I now manage to just barely take out the griffins with a powerful dark inferno and a lucky grit. In the same turn I use fracture to safely finish off the worm, and then I use a large amount of obstructs to safely handle the reinforcements from the north. With them defeated, I abuse Louis' exceptional defense to push into the center of the map. I can't quite hold my ground, so I retreat until I find an opportunity to wipe them all out. And I'll bait out an archer to trigger a large amount of units to move towards me. I can't quite take them all out, but with a sign decoy, they all attack into Louis, allowing for a safe enemy phase. The final group of enemies was much harder than I expect, and I have to leave a high priest alive for enemy phase. I expect to take damage here, but seeing a break, the high priest attacks Ivy, and she easily dodges. I now easily clear out the reinforcements, 
and collect the final few rings to end the map. On chapter 23, I set up for a turn 2 rewarp play. To do this, I carefully position my flyers, and I use a Camilla engage to allow for a good first rewarp. Then I rewarp again. I now use Louis to decimate the bosses, with attacks from a Killer Edge and Brave Lance. During this rampage, I realize that I'll be just short of actions, so I use Fallen Star, and Louis somehow doubles Gris, allowing him to take him down. Fallen Star now allows Louis to safely use Raging Storm on Zephyr to take out a HP bar. Then with one final crit, I beat the chapter. On chapter 24, I yet again position for an easy rewarp skip, but I made a mistake and I almost get hit. I now warp up to the boss and I easily one round them with Ivy. With a few dances, I easily beat the map. On chapter 25, we use rewarp again and yet again, Ivy demolishes the boss with very little effort. Now I do the Marth Paralog. I wonder how I do this one. I just debuff the boss. I then initiate combat with Ivy three times to end the map. On the Allure Paralog, we finally play a map that isn't defeat boss, so we can't just warp skip it. For this map, I use Coins and Gauge Skill to prevent the Corrupted from escaping, while I have Louis take on the enemies to the right, and I mainly use Ivy to beat the units coming from the left. With good use of Corrin, I'm able to clear out all the enemies except the boss. And I wait for the boss to reach the upper part of the map while I regain Emblem Gauge with a few of my units. I now take out the boss to spawn in the reinforcement. On the left, I managed to rely on Ivy to one round the Wolf Knights, and the Halberd is full for the combined power of the rest of my squad. On the following turn, I continue to abuse Ivy's amazing offense to clear out the enemies. While on the right, Louis handles the foes on the enemy phase. Now I use Dark Inferno to weaken the approaching enemies, allowing for me to kill all four of them. And I wait for the southern enemies to approach. And with good use of Corrin and Ivy, I effortlessly handle the huge group of enemies and clear another easy map. With that map down, we gain the Pact Ring. But who would I give it to? In my heart, I knew there was just one option. It was Ivy. With that done, it was time to head towards the final map. I begin the map by rewarping up to Sombron and killing him with Ivy. Now Sombron transforms. And on the second part of the map, I use Louis to decimate the Dark Emblem with a Silver Blade, and I use Ivy to take on the second Dark Emblem. On the next turn, I use Panette and Louis with the Camilla and Sigurd Emblems to finish off the Bow Knight. And I also use Rewalk to send in Linden, who can use Echo to take out both of the final Dark Emblem's HP bars. This drops this barrier, allowing for Ivy to one round someone with Engage Bus, and with Alacrity, she can do this safely without risking a counter. With a few attacks on Sombron, Ivy defeats him for an easy win. To summarize the run, the early game was quite challenging and required a lot of resets, but around the time I got Makaya, I could quite easily trivialize the rest of the game. If you enjoyed, you can watch my no damage run of Felzina log. Be sure to like and subscribe, and bye.